So you may have heard of the two to one pull to push ratio that is often recommended by a lot of personal trainers and strength and conditioning coaches. Uh, we here at Melbourne Strength Culture don't really believe that this is the be all and end all of your upper body training. And we actually think that the two to one ratio actually misses a large portion of upper body training. So today we're gonna to be talking about what we can actually do to improve your upper body training and how we can better balance your pushing and pulling ratio in regards to shoulder blade position and the muscles that stabilize and create movement around the shoulder blades. So first of all, we need to look at a continuum of movement through the upper body. So number one, we need to start here with what actually happens with our pulling movements. So we're gonna start here by saying pull. And what actually occurs whilst we do our pulling movements, particularly what is happening at the shoulder blades, because that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So the osteokinematics of the shoulder blade or how the shoulder blades are actually moving through pulling motions, there's three main things happening. Number one, they go through retraction. Number two, they go through downward rotation. So down rotation. And then number three, they go through depression. Particularly if you've been cued to pull your shoulders down and back or through your pulling movements. So these are the three main things that occur at the shoulder blades whilst going through our pulling movements. Today we're not going to be talking specifically about muscles, we're just going to be talking about the movements. We can then continue our continuum of upper body movements into our push movements. So the issue starts to arise with the classical two to one pull to push ratio when our exercise selections surrounding our pushing movements are geared towards that of more dumbbell and barbell pressing. And this is quite often the case when people, for people who undergo a lot of strength training and who really try to push their numbers. And that is that they like to choose bench press and dumbbell press, so DB press, as their main pushing exercises. Unfortunately, with these two movements, it is vitally important that we keep a retracted position of our shoulder blades for two main reasons. Number one, it provides a strong foundation for you to press against and use your pressing muscles against. And then number two, it controls the stability of the actual glenohumeral joint. So what I mean by that is as we start to come down into our movement, and at the bottom of our movement, by having a retracted position of our shoulder blade, it allows us to control the amount of anterior glide that we get at the glenohumeral joint. So that is where the actual ball, the humeral head, starts to drive forward in the socket. This is not good for a number of reasons, but the main one is it starts to stretch the passive structures that stabilize the anterior shoulder here. So that is why when you do these types of pressing, bench pressing and dumbbell pressing, it's very important to hold our shoulder blades in a retracted position. Unfortunately, what that actually means when we're looking at our pull to push ratio is that at the shoulder blade, so at the scap, this push now actually becomes half a pull in that our shoulder blade position is very, very similar and, and quite often the exact same as our pulling movement in being it's retracted, depressed and downwardly rotated. The idea surrounding strength training, particularly that of injury reduction and prevention, is that we need to create an open movement competencies for each individual. And by that, what I mean is we should be able to access a whole range of movements and be stable in those movements in order to be able to apply force and get stronger. What happens though then, when we start to use a pull to push ratio of two to one and our exercise selection is geared towards dumbbell and bench pressing, we don't actually train any movements around the shoulder blade through protraction, upward rotation or elevation. And this is where we believe here at Melbourne Strength Culture, the two to one pull to push ratio can be improved. We're gonna continue our movement continuum across here and now enter the realm of reaching. And this is quite often a missed step in strength training programming. 
So our reaching exercises are any pushing movements where we allow the shoulder blades to move through a full range of motion. The big two that we use here at Melbourne Strength Culture are push-ups and landmine press. However, any military press or overhead pressing would also be classified in this, in this category. So we have push-ups, we have landmine press, and then we also have military press and all of their variations. Now what these reaching actions actually allow us to do is they allow us to stabilize our shoulder blade through a full range of motion. And that motion is protraction, upward rotation, and elevation. So these reaching movements actually oppose both the push and the pulling categories. So this is where a lot of the benefits in terms of shoulder health and injury prevention actually lie in the reaching category. The second reason why we like reaching movements so much here at Melbourne Strength Culture is that through the movement of protraction and upward rotation, you get a contraction of the serratus anterior. And as that serratus anterior pulls the shoulder blade forward on the rib cage, what it actually does is it pulls the rib cage back. This posterior shift of the rib cage allows for a far greater core contraction in order to stabilize the rib cage and the spine. This is something that through pushing movements, i.e. bench press and dumbbell pressing, you do not get because you're in such an extended position trying to maintain your shoulders in a back and down position to, to support and stabilize the glenohumeral joint. So this is why we believe that is time, if time is of the essence for you and that you cannot do a whole bunch of exercises in one training session, you're far better off choosing a two to one pull to reach ratio as opposed to a two to one pull to push ratio. Reaching is the missing link in a lot of these programs. So now that we've gone over the theory behind why we here at Melbourne Strength Culture do not believe in the two to one pull to push ratio, we're now gonna take you through two movement patterns or two reaching patterns, the push up and the landmine press, and how to best execute them in order to gain the full benefits of a reaching movement. So when we coach the push-up here at Melbourne Strength Culture, there's one main thing that we're looking for to get the benefits of a full reach with our pressing movements. And that is, as we set up for our push-up, that we finish our push-up with our shoulders all the way through. But that, what I mean is we're having our shoulder blades open up and wrap all the way around our body. So as Charlie moves down into his push-up, he'll get full retraction, and then he'll get full protraction with a small amount of upward rotation in his push-up. So as we can see here that as Charlie comes up, his upper back, so his thoracic spine starts to flex and his shoulder blades wrap all the way around his body. What we're not looking for with a push-up is as he comes up, that he just stops the movement once his hands have had, sorry, once his arms are locked. So we go through that again. So what we're not looking for is just to unlock the arms. One more, all the way up with a full reach. So the second reaching movement that we utilize here a lot at Melbourne Strength Culture is the half kneeling landmine press. So for this position, we're gonna set up in a normal landmine press. And again, to get the full benefits of a reach, what we're looking for is when Charlie goes up to push, his, push through the landmine press, he allows his shoulder blade to wrap around his body. So with, for this, we like to cue reaching the, foot, the hand up towards the ceiling. So all the way up to, to a full reach. So we can see that when Charlie does that, he comes forward into a little bit of a lean, he gets his thoracic flexion and that shoulder blade wraps around his body. Again, what we're not looking for here is to just finish the movement once you unlock the elbow. Once you lock the elbow, sorry. So all the way up into a full reach. So that's it for today's video. If you got anything out of this video, make sure you share, subscribe and like the video. We've had some really good feedback so far on the channel. so. Just wanna say thank you to everyone that's supported us so far. The Melbourne Strength Culture YouTube channel is only just getting started and we're really looking to take this thing further. So thank you very much to everyone who shows the support and, and love. As always, happy lifting, welcome to the culture and happy to have you on board.